In today's video, I'm gonna be showcasing you guys five main rotoscope effects that I like to do within my music videos. But first of all, I just wanna say, I appreciate all the support that you guys are giving me on my TikTok, the main two tutorials that I showcased whilst editing videos. And I just wanna say that this TikTok video of me editing Digger D is not actually, you know, me editing that video. It was just some practice. So if any of you are confused, I was getting messages saying, yo, do you know what I'm saying? So no, nah, I appreciate all the love, but um, without further ado, Let's dive into you know a couple effects and the way I like to rotoscope and make these transitions. So what I've done is I've actually highlighted the five you know little segments that I wanted to showcase these effects on. I didn't want to do it on the same clip. I'm going to do the same sort of effects but just on different parts of the video. So I'm going to right click my segment and I'm going to click replace with After Effects composition. So make sure you have After Effects to do these obviously these transitions etc. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do it. So we've got this clip here. So what I usually do is I usually look at the clip and I'm like, all right, what can I do with this clip? And straight away in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, I can definitely rotoscope this. So the first thing I do is I, I go to composition. I click on this icon here, which is called Rotor Brush. So this is the tool we're actually going to be using to cut out Diggity and make it seem as if, you know, he's coming in twice or whatever transition we want to create. We click on layer and this green circle is obviously the tool that we're going to use. So what I usually do is I usually bring this tool down and just cover it over him. So as you can see, it's actually gone over to this person here. So what we're going to do is we're going to move that line to here. So then we can cover his whole body. Of course, you can see this little mistake here, but we're going to, you know, pattern this up after. Now, what I usually do is to bring it in. I hold alt on my keyboard which makes the icon red. I don't know what it is if you're on Mac, I'm on Windows. So yeah, I'm not too sure what that is. I think, I don't know if it's the same button, but um, yeah, literally you bring this back towards where you wanna keep it in. Okay, so as you can see, this is just rough, but as you can see, it's coming together now. So let me just pattern this up for you guys. And you just literally do this until you feel the need like, yeah, this is my rotoscope. And with this sort of stuff, if you're doing it as paid work, you don't want to rush it at all because, you know, the artist might come back and be like, you know, I can see that my, my fingers cut off or, you know, certain things are not in frame. I'm not happy with it, etc. So just make sure that, you know, you're doing it to your best ability. So when I'm moving it frame by frame, the rotoscope may change, meaning that it may come out of position. So as you can see here, we've got a gap. So you want to hold alt again and bring it in. So this process is just all about making sure that your rotoscope is in a good position and it's not moving all over the place, okay? So we're gonna again move another frame, another frame forward. And as you can see here, just that little piece of jacket there is not covered. But again, this is very rough. I'm gonna bring it in. I'm gonna keep looking, keep making sure and bring this even in even more. So his hand kind of just cut off there a little bit. So we kind of just want to bring that in a tiny bit. Again, this is very rough, guys. I'm just showing you the main tutorial on how to do it. And you can perfect it and clean it up in the way you want it to be. So as you can see, we have rotoscoped this whole clip. And of course, he is covered in the purple lines to obviously showcase that we have rotoscoped. So now what you want to do is you want to click on composition. And now you can actually see the effect without any background or you know any anything else in the shot and it's just basically what we've actually rotoscoped so as you can actually see you can see that here in this segment here the table is in shot so i would want to clean that up so by the way i'll clean that up is obviously again using alt and bringing it up bringing it up there and just making sure that that is not gonna be in shot. Next thing that I would do is, I would look on the left hand side where my effect controls are. We've got feather, contrast, shift edge, and reduce chatter. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is obviously increase the feather because this is gonna smoothen out the effect. We're gonna actually bring this to around 15% because I find this is probably the best kind of feather number that I use when I'm doing my effects. And it's exactly what I did in the TikTok video. So. The next thing I would do is go to shift edge and I actually minus this to 100. And why do you say that? Because look how smooth it's made our rotoscope now. Now, if we, we you know, go past 100, look what it's doing. And if we go 
minus you can kind of see it smoothens the edges and that's kind of the way I like to keep it because when I'm doing my rotoscopes I want it to be you know as visible as possible everyone has their preferences on this not everyone likes to do it the way I'm doing it but again it's, it's your own style and I'm showcasing you guys my style so the next thing I'm going to do is actually click on our layer and I'm gonna click on control and press D now what that does is it duplicates the clip so now you can see we actually have two of the same clips but what you got to keep in mind is your second clip is actually going to be the rotoscope that you're moving around the screen now in this shot i'm only going to be using one rotoscope to move around so we're actually going to duplicate this layer again it's so that you can delete the rotoscope off of the third layer what this is going to do is when you delete that rotoscope it's going to bring back the background so let me just control z undo this for you so you can see there's no background and now when we delete the rotoscope off our third layer there's background okay so this background is obviously going to be needed because you want your effect to stand out in the most possible way now you've got these controls here okay and this button right here is motion blur and when you actually click the box this is going to add motion blur to your effect so make sure that whatever rotoscope you're using you want to add that motion blur because it's very very important it's, it's like a huge part of the effect basically so the next thing you want to do, you want to click on the clip that you have rotoscoped and the one that you want to use as the effect. You want to click on that. In this case, it's number two right here. And we're going to click on transform. Now, what this does is basically it gives you a bunch of keyframes to use. So you've got rotation, opacity, scale, position. Do you know what I'm saying? So with this situation and the way we're going to make this effect move is obviously by the position and maybe by the scale. So what keyframes are, what are they? So if I click these two clocks here for position and scale, I've set a starting point for where I want my effect to move. So if I move it here on the timeline and I move the position here, of the effect to the right, that is gonna create a keyframe for it to move there. So that is what keyframes are if you didn't know what they are. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move this to the left hand side because I feel like this is where it looks, you know, most effective. There's a table inside and you know, it can kind of look as if he's still sitting on the table, but just on the left hand side. So as you can see, I've already done my keyframe and it's just moved to the left there. But I feel like this can move a little bit faster in. So I'm gonna bring it more to the left and as you can see that's just a simple rotoscope effect but when it moves to the left i might want to add another keyframe so i'm going to click this button to start the scale keyframe and this is basically going to enable you to zoom in your effect okay so i might want to have a little bounce with a zoom as he's moved to the left here so as you can see it's just like a slight zoom effect there and i can actually position him so he's a little bit more in frame in the way i want it to look so something like this so when it's slowed down around here i'm gonna add my second keyframe for the position here and the next thing i'm gonna do is basically right click on scale and position and we're gonna click reset so this is basically gonna put the effect back to where it first started which means it's gonna look like it's gone straight back into your main rotoscope. So if we click reset for scale and reset for position, as you can see, the rotoscope is gone. So if we move these keyframes to the end of the clip, we can change that after. And if we watch this through, we're gonna be able to see what the effect looks like. So as you can see, as it slowed down, he's gone straight back into frame. But I feel like that was way too slow and I want it to be a little bit more faster. So I'm gonna move it into the left a little bit more here. I'm gonna watch it again. Okay, so for me, I feel like that's still a little bit too slow. We're gonna move it back one more frame and now let's see it. And that's better for me. The next thing I usually do is with all of these keyframes, there's actually a way to make your effect look a little bit more smoother. I usually highlight all the keyframes and on my keyboard on Windows, I press F9. And this is basically gonna give you a smoother look with the keyframe. So when we look at it now, as you can see, it's got more of a cinematic look to it. The next thing I usually do is, this icon right here is a graph. It's a graph editor. And using these little points here, you can actually increase or slow down the speed of your rotoscope. So in this case, if I wanted to make the first rotoscope 
a little bit faster, I would move this graph to the left a little bit. So now when we watch it, they come out much faster. And I think that looks a bit better. Now towards the end, if I want this to be a little bit more faster, again, I can bring this in and then we can see how that looks. The last and final thing I usually do is if I feel like I want to have some sort of blur on this effect here and I don't want it to seem, you know, way too clean, I can go to my effects controls here and I can type in blur. Okay, and what this is going to do is going to obviously blur your effect, blur the image, but there's different types of blur. We have Gaussian blur and we have directional blur. Now, in this case, I'm actually just going to go with a more simple blur. That is the Gaussian blur. And we're going to add that to our video there for our second rotoscope. Then we are going to increase the blurriness. When we're increasing this here, you can actually see it's getting more blurry. Obviously, we're not going to have it too blurry, but we're going to have it, you know, maybe around 11%. So now, as you can see, when the effect comes in, it looks very cinematic and you can just add on things in this case. So for example, if I wanted to add a glow, I actually have Universal um, Studios, which is from Red Giant. It gives you loads of plugins. And this one here is called uni.glow. If I add this onto our rotoscope, it's actually gonna give, you know, the rotoscope a glow effect. So it's gonna make it look even more cinematic. And we can actually turn this down with the intensity right here from one to maybe let's just say 0.5 for example and it just kind of gives it that spark i'm quite happy with this effect um it's very clean very simple um and this is actually how you rotoscope and do these sort of effects very nice very clean okay so again we're going to find our clip that we want to do an effect on this is the clip right click replace with after effects composition go to after effects and i'm going to do this a little bit more faster for you guys okay and we are going to rotoscope him out right here so again this is very rough keep in mind i'm just making sure that i'm keeping this in frame and then we're going to give this a minus 100 okay again position scale in case and for this time i'm actually going to move him for the start of the frame and we're going to bring him in lower this down have it around there and then as soon as his hand comes up around here we're gonna bring him back into frame actually bring him in quite fast and then again around here we could add another keyframe for position and scale and bring him out again so we can actually see how that looks In the next effect we're just going to rotoscope a chain out and we're going to make this just stand out a little bit more give it some sort of effect that you know people could look at and be like oh that actually looks kind of cool um so this one's nothing too crazy we're not moving um anything we're not um changing the scale of it we're just going to keep it in the same position but i think i'm actually going to add a glow onto this so get glow from our effects panel drag it onto our rotoscope and let's just see how that looks I think I'm actually going to increase the intensity to 2.0 and then we're going to go to our effects panel and I'm going to type in fade out so that when I drag this fade out onto our effect, once the effect is over, it's going to fade out. So it gives it that glow and kind of fades out. So for this next effect, we're going to have this image here bounce into its own frame. So we're going to take a picture of it from there using our icon on Premiere Pro. And we're going to drag it onto our timeline. And we're going to make sure that it's ending just before the image comes in. So it's going to look like this, kind of like a freeze frame just before the image pops in. We're going to right click After Effects Composition. And we're going to basically click on our pen tool and just cut this image out. So as you can see, I've cut it out. I'm actually going to increase the feather and we're going to make this smaller and then I'm going to make it pop up from the bottom of the screen right back into its original frame and position. So as you can see, we have just popped back into our position just like that. Okay. But I feel like this effect needs a little bit more lightening up. So we're going to go to our effects panel and we're going to drag hollow matrix onto our image. I'm going to choose a preset. And this is the one I'm liking. So as you can see, it pops straight back into its original position. I 
And last but not least, with this effect, I'm going to be showcasing that slide background effect where the background is basically sliding behind the artist. So we're actually going to rotoscope him out and we're going to make sure that this is, you know, as clean as possible. Um, sometimes with this, you can't rush at all because if you do, you're going to end up having the middle and the main subject of the frame looking a bit weird when the background is blurred. So make sure that you, you're just taking your time and um, not making any mistakes. Obviously, I'm still making this rough. I'm not actually, you know, fully doing it to the way I would, but it's just to give you guys an insight to how to do this effect. Um, I do like this effect a lot. It is definitely one of my favorites. And from the TikTok, a lot of you guys did complement that effect um, the most. So yeah, I had to just put this uh, effect in this video today. So the next thing you want to do once all three adjustment layers have been duplicated, you want to go down to the bottom one. You want to make sure you click on that and delete the rotor brush, of course. Next thing you want to do is go to the effects panel, type in off shift. And once you've done that, you want to drag that onto your third adjustment layer, which is the background of the video. You can then go to the bottom left and you can click on effects and you can see that offset is there. It says shift to center. You're going to click on the keyframe to start the effect and then you're going to move your cursor down into the you know the middle or the end towards the end of the clip to then start moving the numbers towards the right hand side and that is basically going to slide your background as you can see next thing you want to do is you want to go to effects and you want to type in blur get directional blur and drag that onto your layer and then you want to make sure that you blur out the background as much as possible to the point where you can't really see the lining of the frame sliding behind them the best thing to do is obviously to change and increase the directional um, length of the blur so that you can get rid of that lining once you've done that just make sure you highlight your keyframes f9 on the keyboard it's basically going to make sure that your sliding is as clean as possible and this is what it looks like So I hope this in-depth tutorial helped you a lot. I appreciate again every single person that subscribed to the channel, um, followed my TikTok, liked, viewed any of my videos on TikTok, followed me on Instagram. Messages are going wild right now. So I really do appreciate all the support and all the inquiries that you guys are putting across. If you are new here, I know you're new here, but yeah, if you're watching this video, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Um, we've got so much coming to this channel. I've got a freestyle series that is actually approaching in summertime that will be dropping on this channel. All episodes will be coming out weekly on this channel. So make sure you're staying posted up on my Instagram. Follow XP Freestyles on Instagram. Stay updated. If you're a rapper and you're interested, you could be on the series as well. So make sure you stay up to date with all of my visuals, all my content and any other information that I want to put out there for any other opportunity etc but um again appreciate everyone that's clicked on this video today click that like button smash it let's get what well, i don't know 10 likes on this video i would appreciate that a lot and um yeah it's been visuals by xavi i'll catch you in the next video yeah love love